buses or coaches with the same name, many years apart. Probably the best known example of this is the Leyland Titan. It first appeared in 1927, then in 1945, and finally in 1978. And then there was the Royalist. This luxury coach appeared in 1953, and the name was revived again in 1967. This is the story of the Royalist luxury coaches, which are probably among the finest ever built. Hi, this is Jeffrey, and in this video, we're going to learn about the Royalist luxury coaches. Now, what was the Royalist? Well, there were two Royalists, actually. The first one was built in 1953, and it was a very rare and beautiful coach. And the name was then revised in 1967 for another luxury coach. Now, what's interesting about these coaches is that very few of them were built, very few, and very little is known about them. And so they are a mystery even today. So let's get started in learning about the Royalist coaches from 1953 and 1967. This is the story of two rare coaches with the same name, the Royalist, 14 years apart, both in 1953 and 1967. One was an elegant example of the coachmaker's art, and the other was a panoramic style expressing modernism. Let's first take a look at the 1953 coach. It's possible that this is one of the most magnificent coaches ever built. The wonderful lines, the beautifully upholstered and appointed interior, and to complete it all, the swept glass roof edges, which was very rare and very expensive in the 1950s. It was the embodiment of the coach builder's art and craftsmanship. As a side note, it's easy to confuse this royalist with the 1953 ECW body, and supposedly, that is not an accident. Notice, though, that the use of curved toughened glass was applied to the roof, but not the windscreen. In the mid-1950s, curved and strengthened glass was a recent innovation by Pilkington, a specialist in automotive glass, but they hadn't mastered it for large panes, so the windscreens had to be split horizontally. In the later 1967 coach, the windscreen was split vertically and curved to the sides. This 1950s coach clearly heralds the halcyon days of leisurely travel. Those days when the journey was an inherent part of the traveler's enjoyment have long gone. Registration number MAU1955 is a Park Royal Royalist coach body on a Maud Slate chassis that was in fact a badge engineered standard AEC Reliance chassis. This coach was exhibited at the 1954 Motor Show, and the pseudo-registration number is just advertising for Maud Slay, the 1955 registration being the next season of salesmanship. Gulliver 4433 was the phone number of Birch Brothers of Kentish Town, with whom, after the show, it entered service, registered as PLA 830. Park Royal built very few coach bodies after World War II. Mostly, they just dressed up standard bus designs for anything a bit upmarket. However, the Royalist was somewhat special and quite rare. In addition to the prototype, there were 10 coaches built with this style of bodywork. The fleets that they were built for were, number one, Timpson of London, which had four examples, and all of the following had two each. Number two, Bourne and Balmer of Croydon. Number three, Marsh of Harvington, and number four, Sunderland District. But this was not the end of such a named coach. The Royalist name was revived in 1967 for a rather different and even rarer coach body on the Albion rear engine Viking VK43AL chassis. A total of six were built and supplied to the following fleets. Number one, four for Red House Garage, Coventry which were also used for BTS or Bennett Travel Services. Number two, one for Clyde Coast Salt Coats. This was actually the prototype, registration number JCS819F. And number three, one for Hearst Homefirth, which apparently was used by Eatonways. 
10 body numbers were reserved by Park Royal for additional Royalist coaches on the same body and chassis combination, but were never built. One of the mysteries of the 1967 iteration of the Royalist is that there appears to be no surviving photos of its interior. According to the brief specification of the Royalist as stated on its marketing material, it included the following features. The Royalist is a superb blend of traditional craftsmanship and sophisticated design combined to produce a new standard of excellence in the luxury coach field. Construction. The body framework is of English ash, teak, and other selected hardwoods, and front and rear ends and wheel arches are glass fiber resin moldings. Side and roof exterior panels are of aluminum sheet. Seats. Coach-built seats with individual squabs and ashtrays are provided. Cushions and squabs are filled with Vita Foam sponge rubber and covered in replin with Leonella on backs of squabs. The general standard layout seats 41 passengers. Other seating capacities can be provided as required. Interior finish. The interior surfaces of roof, body sides, etc. are of high-grade plastic laminates for good appearance and ease of cleaning. Floor. The floor is of waterproof resin bonded plywood surfaced with grained PVC arrowwalk and a Debron nylon runner is provided. Unfortunately, it appears that none of the Royalist coaches were saved for preservation. Now, in doing research for this video on the Royalists, when I was reviewing comments about this coach on blog posts or in forums, they always referred to this bus, or very often, this bus was referred to as being mythical. Now, I don't know if that's because there were so few of them built, or because there was something so extra special about them. I'm not sure. Perhaps they, they were a little bit better than other coaches of the time, but again, I am not totally sure. So is there anyone out there who has actually ridden on these Royalist coaches when they were in existence? I know it has not been recent, but perhaps there's somebody out there who is somewhat familiar with them. Because how do they stack up? to the other classic coaches of its time. Were they any better? Were they about the same? Were they any worse than other coaches uh, that were its contemporaries? So that's something that I would be interested in knowing. How did they compare to others of the same time? Because there were so few of them built, was there anything super special about them? So that's what I'm interested in knowing. I'm, I'm and I'm sure there were others out there that would be interested in knowing this as well. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look at the Royalist coaches of 1953 and 1967. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye.